It is an honor to present my work on peroxisome proliferator activated receptor gamma agonist as a novel treatment for interstitial cystitis using a rat model. I'm Dr. Craig Cometer. Most of you know that interstitial cystitis is a chronic condition with varying degrees of painful and frequent urination. There's a variety of etiologic factors acting through multiple pathogenic mechanisms. One hypothesis is that there's a structural and functional urethelial alteration with increased bladder epithelial permeability and migration of urinary solutes into the interstitium with mast cell activation causing pain and frequency. There's a disruption of the bladder lining due to a slowing of the reparative process of the bladder wall that is usually restored by replication and differentiation of basal cells. This can result in neurogenic inflammation with afferent hyperactivation, bladder pain, and reduced bladder capacity. This increased solute permeability is due to decreased urine bladder barrier proteins, specifically uroplakin, an antiproliferative factor. There is one drug on the market for repair of the urethelium, pentosin polysulfate. It's the only FDA-approved oral medication for interstitial cystitis. But recently, we've come to appreciate that there's a high incidence of pigmentary maculopathy with blurred vision and difficulty adjusting to dim light. This medication increases the risk of pigmentary maculopathy 11-fold and can progress even after six years off the medication. So there's a great need for alternative pharmacotherapy. Peroxisome proliferator activated receptor gamma agonists, PPAR gamma agonists, have been shown to drive urethelial cells to differentiate and to produce barrier proteins, including uroplakin. Pioglitazone has not been previously investigated as a reparative treatment for IC, and we hypothesize that it may offer a treatment option that would target a known defect in urethelial architecture seen in interstitial cystitis. We took 24 female Sprague Dolly rats. We measured baseline frequency with a filter paper test and baseline bladder capacity. 12 rats were given biweekly intraperitoneal cyclophosphamide to induce inflammatory cystitis, and 12 rats were used as controls. We then divided them into four groups of six. We had the interstitial cystitis rats plus daily sham saline gavage, the IC rats plus daily pioglitazone gavage, 15 milligrams per kilogram, we had non-IC rats who were given daily pioglitazone, and then we had controls with neither IC nor pioglitazone. At four weeks, we did the terminal experiment where we repeated urodynamics and performed organ harvest. We measured urinary frequency, bladder capacity, and performed histologic examination to look at the urethelial integrity. Here's a table form of our voiding studies. The normal rats voided six times per hour, but with IC, that went up to 10 times per hour. With the addition of pioglitazone, that was normalized back down to four voids per hour. Bladder capacity was normal at 0.8 milliliters in the normal rats and decreased all the way down to 0.59 milliliters in the IC rats. The addition of pioglitazone normalized the capacity up to 0.95 milliliters. You can see on the bar graph that the control rats had a capacity of just under a milliliter. This was nearly cut in half with the interstitial cystitis, and it was normalized with the addition of pioglitazone. Histologically, you can see on the left the normal bladder. This rat had neither IC nor pioglitazone. And on the right, you can see a loss of the normal urethelium with barrier thinning. This shows that pioglitazone did not affect the architecture of the normal bladder. On the right is the normal control. On the left is a rat without IC who received pioglitazone. No difference. On the left here, we show the interstitial cystitis rat with loss of the urethelial barrier in the circled region. And this was remedied by addition of pioglitazone and it appears totally normal. Now, what about the risk of urethelial carcinoma? PPAR gamma agonists were originally used for diabetes. These receptors are found throughout the body. They drive urethelial cell differentiation. So hence our interest for their use in the treatment 
where the bladder lining becomes denuded. Hypertrophy of the bladder endothelium has been demonstrated in a rat model with a dose-dependent risk for bladder cancer in diabetics taking pioglitazone. But recent studies have shown conflicting data. In a study from France with 13-year follow-up, there was no increased risk of bladder cancer, and a large meta-analysis showed a statistically insignificant increased risk for bladder cancer, causing the FDA to recommend pioglitazone avoidance in patients at high risk for bladder cancer, namely smokers. The same mechanism of action that may contribute to bladder cancer in at-risk patients may theoretically allow for targeted, time-limited therapy for patients with interstitial cystitis where robust cell differentiation would benefit the protective bladder layer. In a cyclophosphamide-induced cystitis model of IC, the PPAR gamma agonist pioglitazone improved bladder function, systemetric capacity, which was lower, and urinary frequency, which was higher, in rats with induced cystitis were normalized following treatment with pioglitazone. In addition, the structural integrity of the urethelium was improved. Thus, PPAR gamma agonist treatment with propensity to cause bladder urethelial differentiation may prove useful for treating IC and deserves further investigation. Thank you.